Guys, before the video starts, as you guys know, the tragic, tragic floods in Pakistan and people are in dire need. Thousands of people have lost their lives. Please donate in the link below. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. A lot of the times we talk about how important Salah is, but sometimes we need some kind of a physical evidence or a metaphysical evidence. Here is a testimony of a Russian magician, somebody who's involved in actual seher. This is what she had to say about Muslims and how their Salah actually protects them against seher and other things that people that don't like you or the enemies of Islam want to do on you. Here's what she had to say. Then it is easier to work, it is easier to attach an entity, and it is easier to take possession of a person's mind. Does it mean that it's more difficult to influence a person if he keeps his thoughts in purity? Yes, absolutely. When faced with various religions, it is very difficult to influence Muslims. They are in a constant connection with the aggregor. They do namaz every day and read prayers on a daily basis. They are constantly under some kind of a dome, so it is very difficult to influence them. When you start impacting a person, he begins to address in a prayer. Indeed, many of them are very different from those who come to church only when everything is bad in their life. They come to pray and then for five years they forget about God, some canons, and so on. Muslims, as a rule, passionately believe and passionately give energy to their aggregor, and this aggregor protects them very well. That's why it is very difficult to work to make any kind of influence on a true Muslim believer. Is this some kind of a good egregor? Well, for them, yes. This egregor is good for adepts who contribute good energy to it. How do you sense it? For instance, you have found an energy trace of such person. What's next? Do you try to drag him somehow to visualize this threat and you fail? Or how do you do that? It disappears. I cannot get a grip on it. I focus on it, but something immediately knocks me out of the flow, just like that. Or I visualize a person in front of me clearly and can affect him even at a mental level, but some image is not created in my mind at all. I even look at a photo, reproduce an image, but it vanishes from my mind. Thus, I can clearly see that a person is covered with something. Does this only work with Muslims? It does for me. Our brothers and sisters, sadly we live at a time where, as Muslims, we need some kind of a scientific evidence, some kind of an experiment, something so we can have faith in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. But brothers and sisters, Allah has said this before, that indeed our salah protects us. And we might not know that, but to hear a magician, why is it that it has to come from a magician for us to be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Allah and His Messenger has told us about this. Now let's read some verses in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hijr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He said, this is Iblis, My Lord, since you made me go astray, I swear that I shall beautify for them evils on the earth, and I shall lead all of them astray, except those of your servants from among those who are chosen by you. He Allah said, this is the straight path leading to my leading to to me that a person is chosen by through his good deeds. My servants are such that you have no power over them except those of deviators who will follow you. That's one verse. We go to another verse in Surah Al-Araf, verse 14. Same conversation. He said, "Then give me respite until the day when I will be resurrected." He Allah said, "You are granted respite." He said, now that you have led me astray, I will certainly sit for them in ambush on your straight path. Then I will come upon them from their front side and from their behind and from their right and from their left. You will not find most of them, uh, uh, find most of them, but grateful. Brothers and sisters, when we talk about doing our dhikr, when we talk about doing, and this is a salah, can be understood in different ways. You know, if we look at the Arabic language, subhanAllah, it can be a form of dhikr, dua, or salah which we establish. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has physical laws in place. Meaning, like I said before, gravity. I let go the phone, falls. This is a physical reality Allah set in place. It's a law that is in place. There is also metaphysical laws in place. Do you know how many people want to harm you and dislike you? That want to do what well, they already do, their evil eye. Yes, giving you evil eye, uh, jealous, envy. And some go to the lengths of doing sihr. Isn't it interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set these things in place to protect us, even doing your dhikr? This Russian magician is saying that when she tries to focus to harm somebody with the sihr that somebody else has got to do it, she's saying that she goes out of focus. Something pulls her out of focus or when she's trying to harm that person and that as if that there is a protective dome over the person who established salah. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, His true servants who observe the salah will not be harmed by this. 
brothers and sisters, this is just one means. This is just one way of looking at Salah. Salah number one, Allah SWT says, His true servants, yes, humble true servants, would establish Salah, brothers and sisters. We don't need this magic and sihr to pray Salah. Yes, that could be a reason. We should be praying Salah regardless. Brothers and sisters, just by who Allah is, if Allah did nothing for us, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was just to create us and we was just to stand still, doing nothing to their judgment, He deserves our worship. And we know of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this is the bitter truth of the matter, brothers and sisters. We don't want to pray Salah. It's the bitter side. I don't have, I don't have time. I'm busy with the world, etc. Can you imagine what a reality, what a bitter way of looking at life is that you, the one who's created heavens and earth and you, and you're like, I don't have time for you. It's as if you're saying to Allah, you created me, but you wasn't aware that I'll be busy and you're telling me to pray Salah. What an insult to the one who's created you. But the truth of the matter is what? Brothers and sisters, like I said, there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that there is a group of angels that Allah created. From the moment that they were created till the day of resurrection, they are in prostration. You know how we prostrate for 10 seconds, 20 seconds? They are in prostration from the moment they were created to the moment of resurrection. And when they are told to rise up and put their head up, do you know what they will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They will say, oh our Lord, we did not worship you the way you deserve to be worshipped. Can you imagine? They say, we did not worship you the way you deserve to be worshipped. How great he, he is. How great Allah Azza wa Jal is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how majestic he is. Just by him, just by who he is, he deserves our worship, let alone all the blessings you have, man. Go look at your fridge, look at your cupboard, look at the bed that you sleep in, look at the health that you have, and everything that you have. Allah is deserving of worship just for that, just by who He is, let alone what He gives us, and let alone the other things, the realities Allah's created, like seher, magician, envy, jealousy, evil eye that's in place, that Allah has created us, and that this salah, which you do not know about, protects us. And I'm going to end on this note, which is the bitter truth, brothers and sisters. Imagine on the day of judgment, Allah shows you the salah that you prayed, the sadaqah and the zakah that you gave, the fasting that you did, and how they were in the way of so many calamities. Imagine Allah showing you that your child was going to die, or something was going to happen to you, or a bus was going to hit you, but there was this thing that you did that got in the way. How would you feel? Feeling subhanAllah, look how merciful and grateful Allah is. This was just a video for you guys to inshallah wake you guys up from sisters. Salah is the key and the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No ifs, no buts. For those who are uh, saying that it's hard for them, look, I understand, start your journey. But if I gave you 5,000 pounds to wake up for Fajr, you will not even go to sleep just so you don't miss the opportunity. Allah is promising you Jannah. Jannah forever. Everything that you wish, whatever you want is going to be there. On that note, brothers and sisters, we have launched the salahplus.com. Go check it. You can book a free session with a sister from the sister's team, salah instructor, and the brother's team, myself, and come out to you and teach you how to pray salah. You can also book your free guided prayer mat, which teaches you how to pray. And there are videos there that teach you how to pray step by step on our Salah Plus program at Salam. Please check that out. May Allah bless you guys. Till next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.